Kenny Tatum playing a crazy billionaire with a creepy island? Yeah, count me in. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today I'm discussing Blink Twice. It's about tech billionaire Slater King, who meets a cocktail waitress Frida at his fundraising gala, and he invites her to join him and his friends on a dream vacation on his private island. As strange things start to happen, Frida questions her reality. This is directed by Zoe Kravitz, first time director here, also written by her. This was a movie that, the second I saw the trailer, I was like, this looks like something like Don't Worry Darling meets Get Out. And after watching the movie, it is exactly that. And it's kind of a mixed bag. But it's a satisfying one, which is like weird that I would say that, but it kept my interest the entire way through. And I didn't feel like mad or pissed or anything. I got my answers and I felt satisfied by the ending. Some of you may not. But well, let's talk about the movie. Make sure to hit that like subscribe button as well as comment down below your guys' thoughts. I'm really curious to hear if you actually liked this movie. I think this movie is going to be mixed overall. I think some people might love this movie. I think some people might honestly hate the movie. But I think there might be people like me who are kind of like in the mix. Like I appreciate this movie more than I like it or love it. But it is one that I would still say go see form your own opinion. So with that said, let's jump into my pros. And my number one thing is the performances here. I think Naomi Aki is phenomenal in here and specifically how she plays off and builds this character alive because there's certain things about the character that I wish we would have learned a little bit more about but it's in her performance that you're able to understand who she is as a person. And from the way that she just gives so many emotions just from her eyes to her smile is a huge aspect of this character. Alongside that, Audrea Arjona, who I thought was phenomenal in Hitman this year. I think she's just having a rocking year. She is also great in here. First off, comes off as a character that, eh, kind of a bitch. But then you start to understand her a little bit more, flesh her out a bit. And I think the relationship that kind of forms between these two is something that I was like rooting for in the end of the day. Then we have Channing Tatum, who I think if you're still not on board of saying like Channing Tatum's a good actor, then you have not watched a lot of his movies where he just is giving those acting performances. Foxcatcher is definitely one of those, but this movie specifically, he plays a very subdued character. But there's certain monologues he has, specifically one in the third act that really stuck with me. And his charisma his personality, and also his movements are a major piece of his performance and something that really made him terrifying, but at the same time, kind of charming. And I, and I really liked how they were able to play that egotistical aspect of his character off. The rest of the cast is also great. Christian Slater, Simon Rex, Haley Joel Osment, uh, Liz Carabell, so many more. Every person in here did a solid job. Now, First time director Zoe Kravitz. I, I've been a fan of her as an actress, but I've been interested to see, you know, ever since she said she was going to be making this movie, how she was going to pull it off and how she was going to do. And I think overall, it it wasn't the best directorial effort, but it was one that made me go, I'd watch whatever she does next. Whatever she says she's going to direct next is not going to make me roll my eyes, nor is it going to make me like, I'm not looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to it because of her direction here. Now, there's certain things that kind of made me roll my eyes with certain artistic flares that she decides to do in here, but for the most part, she tells a very brisky and breezy psychological horror film that's fast-paced, moves along, every 30 minutes, only an hour and a half without credits, moves along and gives you more depth to each and everything of the story. And it never keeps you disinterested in it. It's short enough and short to the point that it lays out what the thematics are of this movie, even if they're a little surface level, but also provides entertainment. And again, that interest to it all, which is the one thing that kept me locked in. I never, I went into this movie very tired. I, I will say that right now. And I was honestly expecting for myself to have to fall asleep. And if I did, I would have to just go see the movie again to give an actual review. I didn't fall asleep. I was actually intrigued. I was interested, and I liked her direction from there. I think the film also looks really good overall, and I think what she does, the, again, thematically in getting these and some of the parallels and certain subtle messages in here, some of it works. Some of it's, again, a little bit on the nose, but we'll talk about that more in my mixed aspects. Now, this is where I jump into my mixed aspects, where I kind of talk about things that maybe you won't really like, maybe you won't really love, and things that I think just need to be mentioned. So 
I said that this film was very much like Get Out meets Don't Worry Darling, and I think some of that is going to play off onto you. I said the same thing when I saw the trailer, and after seeing the movie, I feel the exact same way, which makes the film feel very familiar in terms of its thematics, in terms of its substance, and in terms of what the twists and turns are in here. Now, there's some in here that I didn't see coming, and I like those. But the big major what is going on with this island, you can basically guess it from the trailer. It's what you've seen before, and I would have liked something maybe a little bit more clever there. Is it bad? No. Is it great? No, because I, again, it's something I've seen before. And then in execution, it is again, like, okay, like cool, we're doing some artistic flares with it and all this stuff. But one of my biggest criticisms with the movie, and this is again, tying somewhat to my issues, is there's not really a lot of depth with a lot of these characters. And that goes for everyone. The characters and the actresses and the actors try to make up the most that they can with this, but the script itself is very laid back to where it's hard to really cheer for anyone besides just saying, yeah, you go, I like you, you're, you're cool, you, I want you to survive this. I wish there was a little bit more depth. I get having a brisk and breezy entertaining thriller, but I do think that 15 to 20 minutes more would have added more depth to some of these characters. And I'm not even saying to add that to the film. I think some of the film gets a little bit repetitive, which you might disagree. You might say, but those repetitive natures add to the cycle and add to the, yeah, 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 I get it. About as much as I can say without getting into spoilers, but I understand what you're saying. But for me, I would have liked a little bit more. And I think some of that goes to the relationship between Channing Tatum and Naomi Aki's character. I think there could have been something built more there. I look at something like Fresh, which if you still haven't seen the movie, you absolutely should. But the way that they build up something in there and then twist, very interesting. And I would have liked if Blink Twice maybe touched on that a little bit more to make me like the characters, to make these twists and turns feel more, oh, holy shit, that's like evil, you know? And I think that's like what I was looking for in here. But again, I came away and I was like, oh, like I kind of expected that. It's, it's shitty, but you know. So, and I'll still say this, like even when you find out what's going on, I was, I was still cheering. I was cheering for Naomi Aki to get to it, you know, do what you need to do to survive. Again, goes back to the interest aspect of that all. I know I was very rambled all right there, but that's why I call this the mixed bag section. So let's jump over to my issues. And I kind of already mentioned one, some of the surface level characters, some artistic flares just overall just didn't work for me. And I found some of the film to be a little bit predictable. Might be different for you. Totally fine. Like really are my only issues with the movie and things that make the film feel a little bit like a mixed bag. I wish the film would have just taken a little bit more of a harder approach and gone a little bit more bolder in certain categories. But Honestly, like if you're just interested in seeing the movie, I don't see you walking away disappointed. Know that it's a little artistic. Know that the characters are a little bit surface level, but also know you're probably gonna guess what the, the twist is. But what you will be is still interested the whole time to see, okay, like while I might know what's happening or have my guess to it, how are they doing that? And those elements intrigued me. And by the end, I was got my answers, and I also got a very satisfying ending, which is something that I wasn't expecting with this movie. And it made me go, fuck yeah. Like, that's what it exactly made me say. So as someone who was exhausted, who didn't know what to expect from this movie, I walked away going, I liked it. It was fine. It's a decent movie. And it's a good directorial effort that I can't wait to see what Zoe Kravitz does next. Didn't blow my mind away. Didn't need to. So with all that said, I'm going to give Blink twice a C+. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, comment down below your thoughts, and of course, until next time, stay classy.